This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson we're going to wrap up our look at creating screening DVDs with HD and higher than HD resolutions. We're going to talk about the actual burning process today and we're going to use four different applications to do this. So this way hopefully we've got you covered no matter which program you happen to be using. We're going to start out looking at Sorensen Squeeze 10 then we're going to move on to Toast Titanium for all my Mac friends out there. Then we're going to move on to Adobe's Encore. And finally, we're going to wrap it up with something for all of you Final Cut converts, all of you Final Cut Pro users who have switched to Media Composer. And we're going to talk about DVD Studio Pro. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Sorens and Squeeze and let's get started. Now, you'll remember from the previous lesson, I'm just going to come into my DVD Elements folder here, you'll remember from the previous lesson that I had created an M2V file and an AC3 file. Now, we're going to get into using those two files in just a second, because in a couple instances, I actually don't even need to do the whole processing or the conversion process that I did in the previous tutorial. It really depends on the application that you're going to be using. To be honest, a program like Encore can do that encoding for you, but I prefer to use a program like Sorensen Squeeze or like Adobe's Media Encoder because I want to have finite control over all the different parameters that I want to get in and adjust. Now for our work in Sorensen Squeeze 10, what I'm going to do is just Command and Tab into Sorensen Squeeze, obviously an Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. What we're going to do is we're just going to take our original file, the original MOV file, and I'm going to simply take it and drag it and drop it into Sorensen Squeeze. Now you'll see that if I drag through everything is all stretched out. Now when I posted a snapshot of this on the Avid Editors of Facebook, everyone was saying, oh Kev, you know when you had this in 16 by 9 they all look stretched. Well if you take a look actually, here everybody looks a little bit taller than they should. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that this file is of course 4x3. Now it should be anamorphic 16 by 9 and that process isn't actually going to happen until I actually get into the actual encode. But I can actually get in and view it before I even do that by simply coming up to the aspect up here and switching it from 4 by 3 to be 16 by 9. There we go. This is actually correct now. That looks much better. Now you'll see over here on the left that I have a preset or a favorite that I'm going to use to do this DVD burn. Now you're probably thinking, well Kev, you probably got it and created that yourself. Well I actually didn't. You'll remember from the previous lesson, all I really need to do is to come into my workflow tab. I can simply come down to disk. I can simply come into DVD. I can simply come into elementary streams. And here are the different presets right here. All I basically did was take the 16 by 9 preset and save it out as a favorite. So all I'm going to do is simply take this. I'm going to drag and drop it right down here onto my shot. And I'm going to twirl down the preset because you'll see right down here at the bottom I have my publish burn to DVD. Now what's important to keep in mind if I double click on that is you'll see that in the burn to DVD process I can actually record to a disc which of course I have my Blu-ray drive set up to burn right here or I could save it to the hard drive if I want to and you'll see that it says that I can create DVD Studio Pro chapter marker file if I want to but I haven't actually gotten in and created any chapter points so I wonder if I can do that. Well, of course I can actually do that, but in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel out of that. Now, what's also important to keep in mind, you'll see that with this preset, it's set to be 2997. Now, you'll want to make sure that that's set correctly, depending on the type of footage that you've exported. My clip is 2997. If you happen to export 2398, you're going to want to make sure that that's set to be 2398 right here. What I'm going to do is just cancel out because I do have the ability to get in and to add chapter points. So how do I go about doing that? Well, I actually already have it set up, but if you don't have it set up, in most cases, you're going to have it set to be thumbnail, which is right here. But what we want, of course, like I said, is chapter. Now, once I have chapter selected, all I have to do is simply come back. And let's just put one at each sort of transition point. I'm just going to go, we'll put it right about there. I'm just simply going to hit M on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. Come down, there we go. Boom, there's another marker. The blue represents a thumbnail marker. We'll just add another marker there. Add one there. And I think we're pretty much good to go. So now if I was to take this clip 
and I was to process it, burn it onto a disc, I would now have a clip on the disc that has chapter marker set, which is very handy, especially if you have a large format or a long format production that you need to burn to a screening DVD. Now, something else that I should point out is that if in this case, you'll see I don't have any time code burn in on my clip. But one of the beauties of Squeeze is that I can actually get in and add that after the fact. If I didn't add it inside a Media Composer, all I need to do is simply double click on my preset. I can come on over to Filters and you're gonna see that right down here, I have either Time Code or Time Code Pass Through. So if I was to activate Time Code Pass Through, it's of course just gonna pass through the time code. Or what I can do is actually get in and add my own time code. I can even choose the time code that I want it to start with. Very, very handy. Okay, so that is Sorensen Squeeze. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna quit out of Sorensen Squeeze. I'm not gonna bother to save. Now this next one is for all my Mac friends out there, and we're gonna talk about Toast Titanium. So let's command and tab into Toast Titanium. Now, of course, again, like I said, this is for all my Mac friends out there. The Sorensen Squeeze technique that I just showed you will work for both Mac and for PC. Now in here, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do double click on the DVD section, DVD video section, and you'll see that if I was just at the main menu, all I'd have to do is actually just click through from data to audio and right here to video. Now, another great thing with using Toast is, of course, again, I don't actually need to process anything before I get in and add the video clips into the Toast interface. So again, I'm gonna come back to my DVD elements folder. I'm gonna take that QuickTime movie, simply drag and drop it right in here, just like such. And of course, what I could do if I wanted to is just take a whole bunch of different clips and just add them in here. You'll see right now this is only 17.6 megabytes, of course, of a 4.37 gigabyte DVD. So that's important to keep in mind. It's really based on the amount of media that you're adding to this disc, which will determine how long of a disc that you can make. Now, of course, Toast could process everything for you, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to quality. You'll see that if I click on it, I could choose good, better, best, or what I would wanna do is select custom so that I can get in and tailor this file exactly the way that I want to. You're gonna see that I also have the ability to come over to disk. I can choose to have the disk autoplay when you insert it and to play all the items continuously. I can even add DVD ROM content to the disk if I want to, and I even have the ability to come in and add a menu in here as well, which is very, very handy to have the ability to do that if you want to. Okay, of course, once you have everything set up inside of Toast, all you need to do is simply come down here, click burn, sit back and Toast will process all your files and burn them to a disk for you. Okay, now let's get a little bit more in depth. What I wanna talk about now is a program that many people have access to. Because you know, a lot of us out there are using the Adobe Creative Cloud, or we're still back on CS6, and that, of course, is Adobe's Encore, of course, available for both Mac and Windows. And I'm going to get in, and I'm going to show you how we can create a very basic menu if we want, let's just say hypothetically, we want the disk to start playing by itself, but if someone hits the menu button, then it's actually going to go to a menu that they can then again hit play and keep the disk playing if they wanted to. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, it's actually very simple. So let's get started and let me show you. Okay, now before we get into Encore, let's create this very basic menu that we're gonna use when creating our DVD. Now, of course, I have a file here called appropriately enough menu.psd. I'm simply gonna open Photoshop and you can see, very complicated. I tried to make things as complicated as I could possibly make them. Okay, so let's create the button. Now, it's a little bit more involved than just you know slapping down a character and saying, oh, that's gonna be my button and you know, sort of going on. We need to actually set this up properly inside of Photoshop so everything carries through to Encore. So the first thing we need to do in creating our button is we need to create a new group. Now to identify this group as a button, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in at the very top a bracket, we're gonna put the plus symbol and another bracket and we're gonna call this button play all. Now if I had multiple buttons, we would basically call the next group plus, you know, special features, then plus, you know, audio setup or something like that. So that's something to keep in mind is that anytime you're creating an actual button itself, this is how you're gonna go about doing it. Now, once I have my group selected or my group created and it's called play all, let's create the highlight that's gonna appear beside play all so that we can select to then start the disc playing or, you know, whatever the button happened to be set up for. Now, to, what we're gonna do is something actually very simple. We're just gonna create an X. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna zoom in on everything here. We'll just slide everything over. And again, very basic, just a big X like that. And we're gonna position it right here, okay? 
Now what we could also do is I could put a line underneath. You know what, maybe instead of doing the X, why don't we do that? Let's actually just create a line here, okay? So I'm just going to create a new layer. We'll fill this with white. Let's actually fill it with white here. There we go, okay? And I think I like this a little bit better than just the plain old X. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna create the button. Now, of course, as long as I make my selection here is how long this button is going to be. So let's just do a reverse selection here. Where is it? There we go, of course, inverse. Looking pretty good. Let's just hit delete. And you can see now that we now have our highlight, okay? Now, what's important to keep in mind is that we've created the highlight, but, and what I should do is just lower that down a little bit. There we go. But the problem is, is that Encore is not going to identify this as a highlight because there's actually another little thing that we need to put right here on the actual layer itself. And what we're going to do is, again, we're going to put a bracket and we're going to put equals one. And I'm going to put another closed bracket just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this play all highlight. Just like such. Okay, so now that I have this done, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to turn this layer off just like that because what's going to happen is, is that Encore is going to see the naming convention that we've given both the group and the actual element itself and it's going to create that highlight for us in our menu. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file of course because we want to make sure we save it so when we go into Encore that's going to appear. What we're going to do now is simply quit out of Adobe's Photoshop and let's get into Encore and let me show you how this is going to work. Okay, so let's command and tab into Adobe's Encore, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that this is where we're going to use our separate M2V and AC3 files. This is why I like doing this in Encore a lot of times because I do all my, you know, sort of my precision work inside of a program like Squeeze and then I'll take those M2V and AC3 files and bring them into Encore to then create the actual DVD itself. That's sort of the process that I've always used. Now you might want to use Adobe's Media Encoder for the same process. Again, completely up to you. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is let's bring that menu in. I'm going to simply right click and we're going to import this element as a menu appropriately enough. Here's my menu right here that I saved. I'm simply going to say open. You'll see there's play all and you'll see that if I click down underneath play all, here is the actual button itself. Now I know it's hard to see because remember, we're only going to see it when it is highlighted. So how do I get it to show me the actual button itself? Well, no problem. What I'm going to do is simply right click on the viewer here. I'm going to come down to preview from here. And as soon as I do, there is that button right here that's ready to have some sort of a trigger added to it to have the button send us somewhere. In this case, we're gonna have it send us back to the DVD. But what we wanna do with our DVD is I wanna make it a pop and play. I call them pop and plays because you pop the disc in and it starts playing on its own. So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's just exit of our out of our preview window here. And of course, let's bring in our two elements. We're gonna import them as a timeline right here. Let's come down to my M2V and my AC3. I'm simply going to say open. You'll see there we go. Boom. They're now in the same timeline. Very nice. And that timeline up here is called SD DVD because that is the name of my video clip. Now, if I wanted to have this element just start playing right off the bat when the disc is popped in, what I need to do is deselect everything. I'm just going to click right here in the project window because once I start clicking on elements, you'll see over here in the properties window, we're going to see the properties for each one of these. But what I want to see is the properties for the disc. So if I just click in the main window just right here, you'll see right here I have the first play. So what do I want the first play to be? Well, I'm going to grab my little pick whip here because I want the first play to be the actual timeline right here. So what's gonna happen is, when this disc is popped in, that timeline is going to immediately start playing. Now let's just say for hypothetical purposes that this is an hour long production. I'm gonna to wanna to have it loop like it's gonna be playing in a store or something like that. So how do I get it to loop when it gets to the end? Well, it's actually very simple. What we wanna do now is to select the timeline. You'll see that the timeline's end action is set to nothing. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna to get to the end of its plane and all of a sudden it's just gonna to go to you know the screen that says DVD video or you know Samsung or something like that. But like I said, we wanna have this loop and keep playing. It's very simple to do again. Take our pick whip, drag it right over here and select SD DVD. So what's gonna happen of course is that if I preview the disc by simply hitting shift and space on the keyboard, you'll see the disc starts to play. Now if I wanted to simulate what would happen as its end action, all I need to do is simply jump ahead and you'll see that it gets to the end, jumps back to the beginning, and starts playing again. But what's going to happen if someone hits the menu button on the remote control? 
Well, let's get in and let's make sure that we actually have that menu as part of the disk itself. And that's very easy to do. What I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm just going to select menu three by double clicking on it. We're going to select that button and we want to make sure that the link for that button sends us back to that SD DVD timeline. Now what's going to happen with this clip here, if I click on it, is that you'll see the menu remote. If someone hits the menu remote button on the remote control, we want to have that take us to menu number three. So let's do this again. Let's come back to my timeline here. And actually, let's just preview the disk here. Shift space. There we go. So of course, what's going to happen at some point is that someone's going to hit the menu button on the keyboard or on the remote control. So once they hit the menu button, it's going to bring us back to the screen that simply says play all. Now, of course, this still screen could have its, you know, it could be anything. It could be your logo. It could be the company logo. It could be really anything you want. But once we get back here, all we need to do is just again to simulate we're actually holding the remote control. Let's select play all. And of course, it's going to go back to the disk and start playing again. OK. So that's how we create a very basic DVD inside of Adobe's Encore. Now, again, let's wrap this up for all my friends who've just converted from Final Cut Pro over to Media Composer by taking a look at how to do the exact same thing inside of DVD Studio Pro. Okay, so let's command and tab into DVD Studio Pro. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I don't need to go through the same process for creating buttons and things like that that I do uh, you know, that I did an Encore that I do for DVD Studio Pro. All I need to basically do is I'm just going to import my elements here again, the menu and both my M2V and AC3 files. I'm simply going to say import. What we're going to do is once these elements are in here, you'll see that we have a menu and we have our main track. Now, in this case, that's really all that we're going to be using. But again, let's do exactly what we did inside of Adobe's Encore, which is I want to have my track play first. Again, a pop and play. Pop the disc in, starts playing the track automatically. So to do that, first of all, you're going to see I have this little icon up here in the upper left hand corner, which represents the first play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on my clip and say have that as the first play. Now, once I have my track set up, all I need to basically do is just basically take my M2V and you'll see that it immediately recognizes that the AC3 goes with that and drops it into my clip. Now, of course, once I select the track, all I need to do is right over here inside the properties window, I'm going to set the end action to be, of course, the tracks. Of course, it's going to be track one. And if I had chapter points, I could have it go to a specific chapter point. But I'm just going to select track. So what's going to happen is, is that when I simulate the disk, of course, it's going to start playing here. And let's look at it in 16 by 9 here. There we go. And of course, I could come down and say, well, show me what the end action is. And it's going to go right back to the beginning and continue playing. OK. But what if I want to get in and add that menu like I did before? So let's do that. I'm simply going to take the menu, drag it, and drop it right in here. There's my play all. But I need to add a button here. So let's do that. All I'm going to do is simply come up to the palette. I'm going to come to the Shapes tab. And let's just choose, well, why not? Let's choose this arrow here. I'm just going to take the arrow. I think that's even a good size. We'll put the arrow right about there. Now, of course, again, I could select really whatever I wanted in here. We got tons of options. I also like the X as well. We got the line, the bar like we had, you know, before. But you know what? I'm happy with that button. Now, of course, what's going to happen is when I click on that button, we want to make sure that this button's target is going right back to the tracks and stories to track one. Again, I could have it go to a specific chapter point if I had multiple chapter points, but I'm just going to send it right back to the beginning to the start of the track. Now, as soon as I do, you'll see the line appear right there from the menu to track one. And what's also important in here is that when the button is hit on the remote control, that it's going to go to the menu. It's going to go to menu one. And in this case, I don't have any buttons there. But if I had a menu with a whole bunch of buttons, I could specify what button I wanted it to go to. Or in this case, because I only have one button, I'll just send it back to the menu. So again, let's simulate the disk. Again, I'll set it back to be 16 by 9. And let's just hit the menu button on the remote control. Boom, there we go. It takes us right back to the main menu. And of course, again, if I was to hit enter on the remote control, of course, my video is going to start playing again. OK, so I hope this look at creating screening DVDs from HD and larger than HD content has made you confident that you can get in. And when the client asks for something, you know, let's say they want to have it for a display in a store or even something that they just want to view at home, you'll have the confidence to get in and create them those screening DVDs with no problems at all.
Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button and don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.